like support is important. And I think a lot of times people, you know, you have that initial support to change behavior. You have, you get sent to that training. Here's the book to read. Here's the, the podcast to listen to, the YouTube videos to watch, the learning experience itself. And then there's the accountability to actually execute it and implement it. And so I think like top tier learning experiences, if we're really looking for behavior change, they have to have both. They have to have that level of support and there has to be that accountability mechanism. And oftentimes teams don't have that built in or they haven't systematized it. So I think that that's probably a big piece that I've noticed around feedback over the years is that, you know, some people will inherently, they'll take it and they'll lean into it. And, but it's dependent on individuals to broach the hard conversations or to spark that tough conversation as opposed to the system supporting it or the structures and the processes within a team supporting it. And so I think we work at both of those levels. We work at that individual level. You know, I can help Pablo kind of learn the material, understand it conceptually, do some practice and some skill build, but eventually you're going to run into a team that may not embrace that in the same way, or they may not have that as a, as a way of working and they haven't identified that and really articulated it. So I think that we can often provide that, that accountability to bridge that from conceptual understanding to actual implementation. And then once it's implemented, you know, we see teams just running with it, right? It becomes a part of the, the culture a part of the rhythm. Um, so I think that's probably what's missing for most of, of the time when we're thinking about behavior change, especially when it comes to communication and feedback is the support and accountability, the balance of those two, probably.